Uh, my name is Don Keel. I'm that crazy old guy with a bushy hair that's invented a new technology that I would that we're going to be describing in a series of YouTube videos. I have a number, number of very sophisticated props next to me and an example of one of the speakers that was constructed according to my patent. Uh, we're filming this at the Cary Church of God in Raleigh, North Carolina, where some of this technology has been applied in loudspeakers that were installed in the sanctuary of this church. They have three large 12-foot so-called freestanding CBT speakers, where CBT stands for constant beam with transducer, that are installed in the sanctuary of this church. Um, Harmon International, the JBL Pro Division, currently is the only company that's commercialized these arrays. JBL has a series of three commercial straight line arrays using the CBT technology that they offer now. And you can refer you to their website, JBL Pro, and they have a CBT series. And they have trademarked, let me see, not copyrighted, yeah, trademarked the three word where CBT stands for constant beam with technology, not constant beam with transducer, which is the way I'm referring to it here now. They applied for one patent in 2004, which is still pending as of today's date, which is August 2010. They applied for a second patent in my name and a fellow engineer from JBL Doug Button, and that covers the specifically the ground plane version of this. And they have a patent on that, which has issued back in March. So uh, technically, uh, you, you know, one needs to be aware that there are patents that exist on this. And you know, of course, uh, these are in the United States patents also. I've worked for a number of loudspeaker companies in the industry, including Electrovoice, JBL, Klipsch, Crown International, and one of the products that I worked for when I worked for JBL and Electrovoice is a series of large commercial constant directivity horns that I have patents on. I have actually a patent at Electrovoice, the first one, and then another patent at JBL that I received in the early 80s and when I was working at JBL I came across a series of technical papers that were published in the Acoustical Society of America in the late 70s and early 80s which I thought might help me to design better loudspeaker horns. Now these horns are so-called constant directivity horns. They have an extremely even horizontal and vertical coverage that's essentially independent of frequency. And that's something that's very useful when you're designing a loudspeaker. You don't want a loudspeaker whose pattern changes as a function of frequency. And furthermore, if you had a speaker that would cover a very wide frequency range and have constant directivity and constant coverage, that would be a very useful thing. But to backtrack a second, I had read these three technical papers that I had come across in the Acoustical Society of America that described some underwater sound research that was done by the US Navy where they had analyzed a spherical cap underwater transducer for both receiving and transmitting underwater sounds. And these loudspeakers or underwater transducers that they had come up with had this unique feature of being able to easily design a loudspeaker that both had wide band constant directivity and constant coverage, but that also you know, maintained this over a very wide frequency range. And then furthermore, these, this research that I came across would allow you to have arbitrary shaped polar patterns that, in other words, you could have a narrow polar pattern or a wider polar pattern 
and which would also be independent of frequency. Uh, one other thing about my background is whether you want to believe this or not, I won an Academy Award for the work I did on loudspeakers for theaters, which was based on the work I had done at JBL. And if you don't believe me, go, uh, we can take a second here and you can rush over to your computer and type in Keel, K-E-E-L-E, my name is Don Keel, type in Keel Academy Award. Now we'll just take a second for that. You go, you go to your computer, I'll wait for a minute or two. Okay, you're back. Uh, now that you know that I've won an Academy Award, you'll know that you should believe what I'm going to be telling you now. Because I'm, I'm a certified audio authority and I know, I know it all. So you, you should believe this. <laughs> all the cameramen here are <laughs> making faces at me here. <laughs> uh, what I'm going to do now is go into some detail on the these military papers. I have some very sophisticated visual aids here. And as I stated a second ago, the, this underwater transducer that the US Navy came up with, and incidentally, this is unclassified work. It was done apparently, you know, funded by the government, but it was unclassified when it was published at the time. And they started out with a sphere for underwater sound that had a piezoelectric transmitter and receiver on the surface of the sphere. And furthermore, they analyzed a so-called spherical cap. Now, dis disregard the little, the little colored objects on these, but a spherical cap is just simply a sphere where you just chunk, you cut a chunk of the sphere off like that. And this is the spherical cap. And so they, by very complicated mathematics based on spherical harmonics, etc., they came up with a so-called shading of the amplitude on the surface of this sphere, which allowed it to be very constant directivity and constant coverage with frequency. Now I've depicted here with these crazy little map pens and colored ones showing, attempting to show the amplitude of the shading. Now the shading again is nothing complicated about it. It's just essentially a, it's a frequency independent level change. And what they discovered based on uh, so-called Legendre functions was that if the surface amplitude on this sphere followed a Legendre function, i.e. it has a maximum amplitude, if you want to think about this as being on axis, it has a maximum amplitude in this direction, and then as you proceed from the center of the spherical cap to the, its outside edge, the shading decreases. Now typically it, it actually decreases from maximum in the center down to very low levels at the outside edge. Some further work that I did in a series of five Audio Engineering Society papers that I published since uh, 2000 as I determined ways to practically implement this shading. And I furthermore implemented the shading in a series of groups or banks separated by 3 dB increments. And this was just an attempt at showing these loudspeaker banks the red would indicate a, a zero dB shading and the blue could indicate minus three dB. And then, uh, and I, I chose to continue this shading out to approximately 12 dB down. I don't have quite enough colors to represent that, but the, the white ones out near the edge are essentially 12 dB down and it goes zero, minus three, six, nine, and 12.